Story recapped here. Today I'm going to explain an action, adventure, and horror film called Escape Room. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In a room filled with various antiques and intricate objects, the ticking of a clock echoes through the walls. This eerie atmosphere is broken when a man plummets through the ceiling. Breathing heavily and slightly disoriented, he struggles to pull himself together and surveys the room. He sees a door with a sliding mechanism embedded in the middle and movable knobs surrounding its frame. He scrambles to get to the door despite his broken leg, noticing 10 knobs, each with their corresponding number and 4 slots at the center. The limited number of slots indicates a code that he'll need to figure out. He slightly moves one of the knobs, and the sound of a metal panel sliding resonates behind him. He turns to the source and sees that the back wall slowly closes in on the door. Horrified at the possibility of getting crushed, he rummages around the room, finding clues. He eventually finds the phrase, follow the light to greener pastures, which leads him to a green book with a bookmarked page that reads, at any point in history, to watch another die unveils time's great mystery, while leaving you alive. He looks around and finds four paintings with hands pointing to different directions, resembling a clock that indicates the code. He then runs to the door and struggles to slide the correct knobs to the center. However, nothing seems to happen. He climbs the broken furniture and thumps on the glass panel on the ceiling, attempting to shatter it but to no avail. He gets pinned between the two walls, and the various broken pieces of furniture pierce his leg, making him scream in agony. Three days earlier in Chicago, Illinois, a college student, Zoe, walks to the lecture hall for her class. She is an intelligent but reserved girl. Then, Zoe's professor calls her back after class to encourage her to speak up more, and Zoe just gives him an uneasy smile and agrees with him. Meanwhile, Jason is an ambitious stockbroker. He often receives gifts from one of his clients, Mr. Ackerman, but most of the time, he tries to deny the lavish gifts, to no avail. On the other hand, a grocery store employee, Ben, labels the prices on the food products in the storage area. He tries asking for a promotion, but is denied by his boss, saying it would be bad for business, primarily since Ben can't interact with customers well. Upon seeing the flask on Ben's table, he suggests that Ben looks for healthier ways to unwind and make some friends. Sadly, that is a sensitive topic for Ben, which slips his boss's mind. So, his boss immediately apologizes and leaves him to continue working. Jason's assistant enters the office with a box in hand, saying that it was from Mr. Ackerman. Upon opening it, Jason finds a smaller black box with a separate note that says, for always thinking outside the box. Slightly puzzled as to why Mr. Ackerman would send him a box that doesn't seem to open, he throws the smaller black box to his assistant, who also seems confused. He then places it on a nearby table upon Jason's exit. In Zoe's dorm room, the sound of a suitcase zipping up can be heard as she wakes up from a nightmare. Zoe abruptly sits up, drenched in sweat, which catches her roommate's attention, who asks her if she's okay. So, Zoe tries to collect herself and reassures her that she's fine. Then, as Zoe's roommate is about to leave for the holidays, a package addressed to Zoe from her professor is found at the door. After some light teasing, she hands the package to Zoe before bidding her goodbye. As she opens the package, Zoe sees her name on a note that reads, Open New Doors. She then puts it down and takes out the black box inside, scrutinizing it. Meanwhile, Ben enters the storage area and turns on the lights, looking at the number of products he will tend to, before taking his time card and checking in for the day. He then notices a black box and a note on his workspace as he returns the time card, and the note reads, A Chance to Escape. Jason, Zoe, and Ben simultaneously inspect their boxes and try to find a way to open them. Then, a piece of the box slides up, and they figure out that it's a puzzle box. After a while, they successfully solve the box, and a note card pops out of it. Upon reading it, they find out that it's an entry voucher for Minos escape rooms, and the first to escape will win $10,000. The next day, Army veteran Amanda enters the Minos building. She is greeted by a security guard, who asks her to provide proof of identification and surrender her phone, as it is not allowed in the escape room. After receiving a name tag, Amanda is told to go to the third floor. Then, an escape room enthusiast, Danny, 
joins her in the elevator and goes to the corresponding room. Upon arriving at the designated room, they see three other people, Mike, a former miner, Jason, and Zoe. After a short while, Ben joins them, and they try to get acquainted with each other. Tired of waiting, Ben tries to go out for a smoke, but the door handle breaks off. Danny excitedly realizes they are already in the first room, and inspects the hole where the handle was previously attached, seeing an oven dial in its place. So, he suggests that they look for clues. Amanda looks at the magazines on the table, and she observes that they are all addressed to the same person, Dr. Wu Tan Yu. Meanwhile, Mike opens a book called Fahrenheit 451 and sees a screwdriver embedded between the pages. Zoe then looks at the book title and realizes that it's the code for the oven dial. After she turns the dial, the heat panels activate and the temperature continuously rises. Soon, Zoe discovers a key in the fire extinguisher and uses it to open the glass partition, revealing a mannequin holding a ringing telephone. Jason picks it up and a recording tells them to follow the posted rules. Unfortunately, after putting the phone down, the room temperature rises again. While helping Amanda calm down by giving her a glass of water, Zoe notices a posted rule informing them always to use coasters. Zoe pushes down the coaster, and the group discovers a duct hidden behind a painting. Zoe, Ben, Danny, and Mike push down the six coasters simultaneously to make sure that the entrance of the duct stays open. Jason then enters the duct, finding a way to the next room. He discovers a closed gate, and asks Mike to give him the screwdriver. Amanda is the next to go in the duct, leaving Zoe, Danny, and Ben. Zoe figures out that they could use a full glass of water to weigh down the coasters. Zoe follows in while Danny and Ben fill the rest of the glasses. However, they run out of water just as they're about to fill the last glass. So Ben decides to use the contents of his flask. Then, they hurriedly climb into the duct for the next room, just before the previous one is engulfed in flames. Finally safe in what seems to be a cabin, Amanda expresses her concerns to Danny regarding the authenticity of the flames in the previous room, which he dismisses. Meanwhile, Jason turns to the door and notices a lock that requires a key, so he and Zoe start to look around for the key and find it in a bag near the window. Then, upon unlocking it, he notices another lock, this time needing a seven-letter word. Seeing as their arguments are futile, the rest of the group helps to search the place for clues, and Mike notices the phrase, you'll go down in history on the fireplace. Looking around, Ben takes a closer look at the displayed antlers and sees that letters are etched on each one. Then suddenly, Ben remembers a painful memory. Ben drove a car with his friends despite his intoxicated state, and as they happily sang along to the song Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, they failed to see the oncoming truck. Ben puts the pieces together, realizing that the letters on the antlers form a word, and that the quote referred to the lyrics of a song they sang that night. He then tells the others that the answer to the lock is Rudolph, and they successfully open it. They exit the cabin, and find themselves in some sort of frozen lake, when the doors and windows of the cabin close behind them. Danny walks further away and hits a screen wall, and vents suddenly open on the wall and blast cold air out. Concerned about what might happen next, the group tells Danny to rush back. They then decide to split up and search the area for clues. Amanda finds a box of supplies near a broken boat, Jason finds a locked door, and Amanda also searches the supply box, only to find a single red winter jacket. Behind the supply box, Zoe sees the words, True North is a lie. On the other hand, Mike sees a frozen wolf statue staring at a fishing rod. While trying to find a way to warm up, Ben stumbles upon a fishing hole. Then, with a fishing rod that Mike took from the tree, the group stands around the hole and waits for something to get caught in the fishing line. Meanwhile, Zoe finds a compass in the coat pocket, and upon using it, she discovers a magnet inside a polar bear statue. So, they attach it to the line and fish out a frozen cube with a key in the middle. They ask Ben for his lighter to help thaw the ice, but since he's frustrated and cold, Ben slides it over to them. Danny then grabs it, and prepares to go back when the ice suddenly cracks, and he falls into the ice-cold water. They try to look for Danny above the ice to no avail, and that's when they realize that they could actually die while playing the game. With no other choice, they use their body heat to thaw the cube of ice. Meanwhile, the temperature continues to drop. Eventually, the group manages to get the key out of the ice, and Jason grabs it then runs to the door. He turns the key, 
and a door opens on the opposite side, and they hurriedly run towards it, as the frozen lake explodes and cracks. In the next room, they find themselves in an upside-down bar. Just as they are settling in, the room seems to move up, and they hold on to the nearest thing to them. The room then stops moving, and the telephone on the pool table rings. Mike stands directly under it, and the phone drops, letting out a loud, high-pitched sound followed by elevator music. Jason looks around and notices a door without a handle, while Mike observes that the eight ball is missing from the pool table. Next, a piece of the floor falls away, and the group hurries to find somewhere to stand without having to touch it. As their time runs out, Amanda climbs the bar and sees a locked box requiring a four-digit code. They eventually find a code from the sliding puzzle that Zoe solved, but it doesn't work, and another piece of the floor falls. Zoe then falls as she tries to climb on another piece of furniture, rendering her unconscious, and her mind flashes back to the day of her plane crash. As she opened her eyes, she noticed that she was the lone survivor, and everyone else was strapped to their seats, hanging upside down, lifeless. Jason wakes Zoe up and helps her up the furniture near the door where Mike and Ben are waiting. Zoe tells Amanda to input the numbers in reverse, successfully unlocking the box. Amanda then finds a knob, then tries to use the pool table to get to the door, but the knob falls out of her pocket, forcing her to jump down to grab it, just as it reaches the edge. Amanda throws it to Jason, and holds on to the phone line, just as the final floor falls away, and she tells Zoe that it's okay, knowing she won't survive before the phone line finally snaps. Entering the next room, they notice six hospital beds, each mirroring the ones they were in when they were declared as sole survivors of various accidents. Amanda from an IED blast, Zoe from a plane crash, Jason was with his college roommate when their boat flipped over but was found alone by the Coast Guard, Ben from a car crash, and Mike from a cave-in at the mine. They realize that the elements of the game are taken from their experiences, and they also learn that Danny was the sole survivor of carbon monoxide poisoning. Zoe states that the game creators probably want to see who would be the luckiest out of everyone else. Then, a TV broadcast plays, notifying them that they only have five minutes to look for clues and solve the puzzle. Jason, Mike, and Ben start to look around for clues. Frustrated, Zoe tells them that the game is designed to let the creators win whatever they do. Unconvinced that there's another way out, the three men continue searching for clues when Mike eventually sees x-ray scans. They then hasten to the X-ray film illuminator on one side of the room, and Ben observes that they spell out the letters EKG in sign language. Meanwhile, Zoe finds an IV stand and uses it to destroy the security cameras. Panicked from the overwhelming time pressure, Ben asks her what she's doing, to which Zoe answers that, like the quantum Zeno effect, nothing will change, as long as the creators can watch them. At the same time, Ben tries to convince Zoe to help them solve the clues. Adamant, she continues to break the security cameras. Jason sees a tank of poison attached to the wall and says they'll get poisoned unless they find a way out. And soon, he finds the EKG machine. Now, they only have to figure out the correct heartbeat to open the door. Convinced that they need a high heart rate, Jason uses a defibrillator on Mike multiple times and eventually kills him with it. The TV broadcast then repeats that they test their limits, just as time runs out and poison gas fills the room. So, Jason sits by one of the tanks emitting gas to try and lower his heart rate to 50 and opens the door to the next room. Jason and Ben enter the next room, while Zoe remains convinced there's another exit and insists on being left behind. Outraged by Jason's behavior, Ben forces him into admitting that he actually killed his friend to survive. However, Jason only indirectly admits it and says that surviving is a choice. Looking around the room filled with optical illusions, they open a hatch found on the floor that releases a hallucinogen. Seeing the clue on the hatch about the cure, Ben and Jason struggle to find the antidote, but eventually, Ben finds it. Unfortunately, it's only for one person, so they fight for it, and Jason breaks Ben's leg. Ben then pushes Jason, who hits his head on the edge of an overhead cabinet, leading to his downfall. In the end, Ben injects the antidote into his thigh and escapes into the next room. On the other hand, cleaners in hazmat suits enter the room where Zoe is. They see an oxygen mask connected to an opening where there used to be a security camera, and as Zoe knocks them out from behind, it's revealed that she used the mask to breathe. She then grabs the gun dropped by one of the cleaners, and flees the room through a secret door. 
Concurrently, Ben crawls down to the fireplace and uses a shield to avoid getting burned. Then, once the back wall meets the door, it opens to reveal a room with various equipment and the contestants' pictures projected on the wall. There, he meets the games master, who explains that the games have happened before, each with different themes, and people bet on who would win. Thinking that he can finally leave the place, Ben relaxes on the chair, only to be strangled by the games master. Luckily, Zoe arrives and shoots the game master from behind, saving Ben. The man still tries to fight and attack Zoe, but in the end, Ben hits him in the face with a bottle before shooting him. They then flee the building and get treated in a hospital later, and as a police officer arrives to pick up Zoe, Ben remains asleep. Together, they return to the building where the escape room was held, only to find an abandoned building with no evidence of anything happening there. Instead, the words no way out are spray painted on the wall, which Zoe realizes is an anagram of Wu Tan Yu, the name they repeatedly saw throughout the game. Six months later, Zoe and Ben meet up for coffee to catch up, and she convinces him to fly to Manhattan and help her find the game's creator. However, they're unaware that the game's creator plans to intercept them by turning their plane into an escape room with only a 4% chance of survival. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.